also need to change the energy of the reference, right? Yeah, I, I am I'm calculating this one. I use basically supercomputers, big computers, so we can attack many problems. And I'm focusing mainly on um, alternative ways to create energy. We, we use some laws in physics and in chemistry. Basically what we use is something called quantum mechanics, laws of quantum mechanics, and we try to make a code that it will um, follow those laws. So when we have the basic laws written in an algorithm, you can essentially attack many, many problems. No, no, with respect to this, right? No, we are calculating the energy with respect to this. Oh, okay, okay. What we are trying to do is try to get some, um, something that resembles photosynthesis, meaning something that resembles what nature does. So every uh, green leaf can convert sunlight into essentially food. And we call that process photosynthesis. Um, so in nature, what it does is uh, sunlight, it's converted into carbohydrates that eventually animals eat them or we can eat the plants and so on. In our case, we try to hijack that process. So what we're trying to find is a material that can convert sunlight, not only in electricity, but sunlight so into a chemical fuel. What happened with molybdenum? They take a material that we're going to put under the sun and it's going to bubble, it's going to be underwater and it's going to bubble oxygen and hydrogen. And that will be the chemical fuel that you can use later on when there is no sun. Perhaps to heat up your house or also there are some potential applications to be used for cars instead of gasoline. If we don't find a solution now, and we try to find it at that time, uh, we might have some problems because we, we need energies and our current way of living needs a lot of energy. So it's important to try to find alternatives now such that by the time we need that technology, it's very well developed.